Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. We're in Chapter 5, part of this playlist that I'm calling Limiting Distributions, and this is the sixth video in this little mini-series. And we'll start where we left off from Video 5. First, I want a correction. At the end of the fifth video in this little mini-series, I stated this theorem without proof, and I'm going to use that theorem in this video, and I noticed that I had it wrong. It's if Zn converges, meaning this fraction converges in distribution to a standard normal, then the random variable Yn converges in probability to M. Okay, that's a, and we st we're stating that without fact. Okay, so here's some examples of stochastic convergence. Let Wi be the weight of the eighth airline passenger's luggage. Assume that the weights are independent, each with PDF and CDF as follows. So here's the PDF, here's the CDF. If W1 is the smallest value of n, so it's the smallest order statistic, then show that it converges in probability to zero as n goes to infinity. So first, let's find the PDF of the first order statistic. And I have two videos earlier in this playlist I talk about order statistics. And I have several videos on order statistics in a playlist I call non-parametrics. But after you watch those, then you'll instantly know that this is the correct density for that first order statistic. We plug in the values W1 for the PDF and the CDF, and we get this. Now let's find the CDF of the first order statistic. That means we integrate from 0 to W1 of this PDF. So we plug in what we know. In this integration, I let u equal t divided by b raised to the theta. So basically this piece right here. And then I'm not going to go through the math in the interest of time, but it ends up being this right here. So the first order, the CDF of the first order statistic is this, you know, given that, that w1 is between 0 and beta. Now let's look at the limiting distribution of this distribution. So we let n go to infinity in the, of this, and then notice that this fraction, since w is always between those, is always less than 1, which means 1 minus that is less than 1, and, and raising it to the nth power to infinity, this goes to 0, so we get 1. So when we're below 0, we're 0 because it's undefined, and if we're above 0, this goes to z to 1, and then at that point where it's not at, at 0, we can put it anywhere we want because it's one point. It has probably 0, so it doesn't matter where we place it, but we have to place it here, so this is a true CDF. But this is a CDF of a de degenerate distribution that this implies that the probability of the limiting distribution that you know the smallest order statistic equals zero is one and that's clearly illustrates the w1 converges in probability to zero it is zero <laughs> and yeah in limit asymptotically it's zero so let's let Wn be the largest value of n, so it's the largest order statistic, then show it converges in probability to b as n goes to infinity. So let's find the, the PDF of the largest order statistic, and generically this is the formula for it. And again, if you watch those videos on order statistics, you'll go, oh yeah, that makes sense. So we pl plug it into the values that we were given to the CDF and the PDF, and then we get this. Now let's find the CDF of this PDF, or the CDF of the random variable that has PDF this. So we integrate it from 0 to Wn of the PDF of the largest order statistic, plug in the values. There's only one variable, you know, in this, so it's easy to integrate, and we get this. Let's look at the limiting distribution of it. So we take the limiting as the limit as n goes to infinity of the CDF of the largest order statistic. Plug in the values. And note that this is always less than 1. 
and then we're raising it to an infinite number so it it goes to zero whenever w n is less than b but when it is b it is one right so this limits to a cdf of this structure which is the CDF of a degenerate distribution. This implies that the probability that WN equals B is equal to one. So in limit, right? So thus the WN converges in probability to B. Now, if WK is the median where K over N goes to 0.5, that median value. And of course, this has to be bounded in order for this, their convergence to be uh, work to have convergence to what does WK converge to stochastically so in the theorem that I corrected at the beginning of this video we showed in that video 5 that the, the median limits in distribution to a normal density of this type mean this and variance this and so and so that theorem says if we know that a random variable is asymptotic or asymptotically distributed as a normal random variable or goes in distribution to a normal then that random variable in uh, converges in probability to the mean and so since this WK converges in distribution to a normal distribution then we know that that random variable converges in probability to the mean now some additional limit theorems so this is section seven of this chapter um, convergence and probability now the sequence of random variables yn is said to converge in probability to y written as yn p so yn converges in probability to this random variable now before notice that we were it was converging in probability to a constant but here it's converging in probability to another random variable and we, this is true if the probability of this difference, absolute value of this difference, is really small, less than any value epsilon equals 1. Then y and convergence in probability to y. Now here's a couple remarks. Convergence in probability is a stronger property than convergence in distribution. And there's a couple reasons, but here's some heuristic reasons. Y is and can be a random variable right so to calculate this probability requires the joint density of y n and y so the probability requires the joint density of y n and y now the convergence and distribution does not require the joint density for y n and y so it's a little bit less restrictive and there's a theorem that says for a sequence of random variables if y n converges in probability to y then it converges in distribution to y and we're not going to prove that but i have a theorem called basic limit theorems two of eleven convergence from probability implies convergence in distribution i provide an epsilon delta proof of this theorem if you're interested now here's an example that um, remember this is convergence and probability implies convergence and distribution it's not the other way and this is an example to show that convergence and distribution does not imply convergence and probability so assume we have a four-sided die and the sample space is one two three four so these are the elements and the probability of each event or each element is one fourth now we're going to define a new random variable and that random variable is if we're less than 2.5 count it as one if we're greater than 2.5 make it zero so our random variable xn takes on the value 1 or 0. Now it takes on the value of 1, you know, if we see the, the event 1 or 2, it takes on a 0 if we see event 3 or 4. But remember, this random variable only has two values, 0 and 1. And this is for all n. Now let's define a new variable that does not depend upon n. And technically, this first random variable doesn't either but that's our sequence it's a constant sequence so this random variable is just the opposite so we're going to define it as zero if we're less than 2.5 and it's going to be a one if we're greater than 2.5 
Now note that the absolute value of these two random variables is one, right? So if we take xn of one minus x of one, we get one minus zero, that's one. And that's true for any element in the sample space. So notice that x of n never converges to x, right? It's always one and never gets small, never gets close. So thus, xn does not converge in probability to x. However, both of these random variables, remember xn is a 0, 1 random variable and x is a 0, 1 random variable. And they both have CDF that looks like this. If we're less than 0, it's 0. If we're between 0 and 1, it's 1 half. If we're greater than 1, it's 1. They, they equal. So that implies that Fn converges to x. So it's even stronger. It equals x. So it has to converge, which means they, it converges in distribution to x, right? So even though it converges in distribution to x, it does not converge in probability. So this is a counterexample to the, you know, the, that example or the theorem. So the next theorem, if xn converges in probability to some constant c, then for any functions g that is continuous at c, then the function of the random variable converges in probability to the, to the function evaluated at c. Now here's a quick little proof. Because gy is continuous at c, it follows that every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, a delta greater than zero exists such that if the difference between y and c is less than delta, then g of y minus g of c is less than epsilon, right? If we get close on our inputs, then the outputs are going to be close. That's the definition of continuous. But in probability, if this is true, then that's true, means this probability is smaller than this probability. So we can, we state that. So this probability is less than or equal to this probability. But note that we're assuming that yn converges in probability to c. So this is 1 as the n, as n goes to infinity, right? So this probability is 1, which we said was always less than this probability. But if this is 1, this can't be more than 1. Probability is always 1 or less. So that equals 1. So that says that, there's, that the function g of yn converges in probability to g of c. And that's what we wanted to show. Now, I'm at the end of page 18, which I said I was only going to cover three pages at a time. So we'll cover the, the last three pages in the seventh video. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.